We now invite you to join us for part 11 of the conference titled The First Middle East Vegetarian or MiVeg Congress held in the city of Dubai in the United Arab Emirates on December 6, 2010 with Mohammad Parham Alwadi, co-owner of Wild Pita, whose vegetarian shawarma options offers a unique take on making nutritious, good food served fast. They have received tremendous attention for their unconventional use of social media site to market their bread. And uh, you know, they have given a fresh perspective to shawarma. I mean, you know, the favorite thing whenever you think of Arab food, the first thing that comes to mind is shawarma. So they have added a new touch and today something special will also be launched with the school kids coming over here. So um, it's not uncommon to see their followers influencing decisions related to operations, design, menu listing, they call it brand democracy. So we like the fresh blood that has come up and started such innovative uh, restaurants over here. So Malapita aims to become the world's first Emirati restaurant brand to be exported across the world. So we wish you good luck and please. Thank you very much. Every time I hold a mic, I feel like I'm in karaoke. Uh, I, I want to ask a few questions. How many people sitting here have been living in the Middle East for a few years now? Raise your hands. Terrific. How many vegetarians do we have here? Raise your hands. Excellent. So you vegetarians, how many of you have had shawarmas? So there's one vegetarian who's had a shawarma. <laughs> so how, how is that even possible? Right? And uh, we all know that shawarma equates with meat. So you have two choices. You have meat and you have chicken shawarma. So obviously vegetarians cannot eat that. And if you do, it's, it's a horrible sandwich. It has two, three types of uh, vegetables in it, if you're lucky. Usually it has one. And a little bit of uh, sauce in there. So about 10 years ago, my brother and I came up with an idea. We looked at the shawarma, this, this amazing sandwich. Uh, and depending from where you're from, whether you're Turkish or you're, you're Greek, uh, it could be either or, that, that shawarma, that sandwich has been around for centuries. So, so we looked at the shawarma and we said, look around the world, look at the, the food industry, look at the hamburger, look at the hot dog, look at the pizza. It's evolved so much and it's become so popular. So when I say pizza, which fast food companies comes to mind? Pizza Hut, or and I can name a few others. When I say the hamburger, which companies come to mind? McDonald's, Burger King, and so forth. And you know, there's there's other examples of, of chicken and, and, and whatnot. So why hadn't the shawarma evolved? Why had it stayed the way it was? We saw a few barriers. One, and the biggest one, is definitely if you're a vegetarian, you cannot have a shawarma, obviously. So that was one. The other one was, it was a bit limited. Like I said, you could either have it with a uh, sesame seed paste sauce, or you can have it with a garlic mayonnaise. And obviously, garlic mayonnaise has eggs in it, again, feeding into the vegetarian factor. So we came up with an idea. How can we evolve the shawarma? How can we make it relevant to an international palate? How can we make it relevant to vegetarians? So 10 years ago, we had this idea, we worked on this business plan, and we called it wild pita. Pita meaning the bread that we use. It's the, the flat bread. We actually just called it pita with two E's, P-E-E-T-A. And the reason for that was, uh, to, it's, it's actually supposed to be spelled P-I-T-A. And we found people pronouncing it Pita or Pita, and some people said Pita. So we said, you know what, let's replace that I with two E's and call it Pita. And then a family member heard about our idea and said, wow, that's a really wild idea that you guys have. So, wow, Pita was born, a little bit of trivia. So, so it took us 10 years to bring this concept to life. Why did it take 10 years? 
Um, we didn't have the uh, funding to start this business, neither our family. So we looked around, we looked at financial institutions, uh, banks, and, and so forth. And um, we went to them, we said, Hello, uh, bank, we have this crazy idea. We're two Iranian guys that want to open up a shawarma place, but we're going to have vegetarian shawarmas. So, 10 years, nobody entertained us. We couldn't get any money to start our business. However, if you wanted to buy property in the UAE, there was plenty of money for that. So what's so special about Wampina, this product that we have? The cool thing about Wampina is we have the world's first vegetarian shawarma. Now, I like uh, vegetarian food and uh, you'll probably find me, if I'm not eating uh, at Wampina, you'll find me in Karama somewhere. You know, and that's probably my favorite place in, uh, in Dubai. Amazing restaurants over there, and you'll probably find me in an Indian vegetarian restaurant. And when I walk in, look in the, the way I do with my brother, and we sit down and we ask for the menu, the first thing the waiter says usually is, excuse me sir, we don't have any meat. And I say, that's great. So, w what we did with the, with the shawarma was, you know, why not have a vegetarian shawarma? And you know what, let's not just make it boring. Let's not put two or three vegetables in there and call it vegetarian. So what we do is we add char grilled vegetables in there. So char grilled potatoes, zucchini, and carrots. And then you get to choose from about 10 to 15 vegetables to put inside it. Uh, Subway style, you know, when you're standing there and you choose which vegetables to put into your sandwich. Same concept, except we source our vegetables from Middle Eastern farms. So we know which farms these vegetables come from, and they are from the Middle East. The other thing is, if you look at our vegetables versus Subway, I like Subway, but it can get boring flavor-wise, yeah, and even nutrition-wise. They have lettuce, they have tomato, they have onions, if you're lucky, they have cucumbers. What you'll find at Wapita is we have shredded red cabbage, we have shredded carrots, we have fresh mint leaves, we have fresh parsley, we have coriander, we have basil. So you get to choose from all of that. Now, I said that we wanted to make the shawarma uh, applicable to an international palate. How do we do that? So for the first time, you have a choice of more than just two flavors of shawarma. So you can have your vegan shawarma with, yes, the tahiniya, the sesame seed paste shawarma, but you can have a Mexican shawarma. So that's uh, with a black bean sauce that we create. You can have it with an Italian red, it's a pizza sauce that we've created. Or an Italian white, it's a, a cream and mushroom sauce that we made. You can have the, the world's first Khaliji shawarma. So it's a sauce that we created that has the Khaliji spices in there. You can have the Indian makhni flavor, and so on and so on. So it's been a year now since we've opened and uh, to be honest we didn't expect that uh, we'd be doing so well and people would appreciate uh, our food and we certainly didn't expect to be speaking at a vegetarian conference to be honest. Um, so it's, it's really great to, to be here. What I also wanted to, um, to talk about today was growing up in terms of uh, finding good food to eat is, is very uh, it's very difficult and what we started to see my brother and I was you know if we wanted something to eat quickly uh, conveniently and cheap it was the usual suspects it was McDonald's it was so and so and again it, they were almost forcing meat onto you so one of the the goals that we have as Wapita was to have an ethical product to challenge the fast food industry and in fact, when, you, when we talk about our business, Wapita, we don't call ourselves fast food. We call ourselves good food served fast. And there's a, there's a big difference because the fast food, that word, just has such a negative connotation to it. And we all know all you have to do is go on Google and Google anything related to fast food and it'll tell you in your face how bad it is for you. But they make it so easy, they make it so simple, so cheap. You know that you go for that and, and the reason why we attend these sort of talks and, and speak to people is it has to happen on the grassroots level 
because the corporations, the fast food corporations, are very powerful and they're blasting our children with information about how great their products are. And I'll tell you what, you know, I see the ads on the streets that McDonald's has about how, how high the quality of their food is. If you go into a McDonald's outlet and they'll invite you, you can go to a McDonald's restaurant today and say, I'd like to go to the kitchen. They'll say, okay, maybe not now, but I'll book you and you can go for a tour. Truth, you can. But it's nutrition where the issue is. If you look at that food. So, what we decided was, we're gonna make our own bread. So we know exactly what goes into our bread. And you can, of course, have the traditional uh, the white bread, um, the white pita bread, which we, we had to start off with because of uh, its popularity. We've just launched the, the brown pita bread. So you can have a brown pita bread, brown shawarma. And we're gonna launch other, uh, other types of bread as well, gluten-free and so forth and so forth. The vegetables that we use are from the region, from Middle Eastern farms, so it's reinvesting in our community. And when I walk into a supermarket and I see that 2% to 5% of the shelf space in the vegetable section is dedicated to local produce, just 5%, and 95% is imported, doesn't that make you think? So how are local farms supposed to sustain themselves? When we went to the uh, vegetable market and we, we spoke to wholesalers and we said, you know, we only want to buy regional products from you. They just looked at us with a blank face, like, why? It's cheaper to get ginger from and garlic from China. Why would you want to get it from the Middle East? It's more expensive. But somebody has to do it. We have to do it. We have to start somewhere. That's, uh, that's my talk uh, for today. And uh, I don't know how much time I have, but if there's any questions, uh, I'd love to answer them. Well, it's a good idea to start the vegetarian businesses so that you can reach more people. But is your business idea just a business idea or there are some values behind those? What are those values? Uh, I, I come from uh, 12 years of uh, multinational experience, so I worked with cosmetic companies, uh, medical equipment. My brother was is ex Pepsi, and he is uh, ex Master Foods, which is Galaxy Chocolates and, and whatnot. So uh, we we come from that corporate way of thinking, you know. But we certainly were not brainwashed by it. And when you look at the values of a, of a corporation, there there's two that always stand out, which is. Uh, shareholder value and profit and we that never settled well with us because if those are the only two things that drive your business then it's not sustainable then it could only lead to destruction yeah growing your sales on paper looks great and it's terrific in your pocket but it means growing more food or producing more and more and more and more of things that you don't necessarily need, of food that you cannot necessarily consume. So we reevaluated re our values and we said, you know what, it's not going to be just shareholder driven, it's not going to be just profit driven. So our values, we call it the four pillars of Wild Pita, which is assimilate with the community, food with integrity and ethics. We have uh, shareholder value as well and giving this living earth the highest level of respect. So our four pillars, it's not a CSR program, it's who we are. It drives everything that we do.